Good morning. My name is Steve Jans, and welcome to my YouTube series. We're going to look at EPS, and this is a topic that I teach in Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, also known as FA3. Now, this is probably the most challenging problem I've ever used in any of my YouTube videos, and I'm going to solve it with you. EPS is a topic that students have to work at really hard because there's just so many things to take a look at. And this problem, I like it to throw in the kitchen sink at you. It has got everything coming at you. So I'm going to work through the entire problem with you. It's probably going to be my longest video. And hopefully, once you are practicing this question a number of times, and have you watched this video a few times, it really starts to make sense. All the little things that you have to pay attention to in this topic. It's, I think, a fun topic because it requires so much reading and careful reading and it requires a lot of knowledge and it's an interesting, challenging topic. I think it's a lot of fun that way. So let's get started and take a look at it. So we're going to take a look at Bashful Company and we're going to take a look at how to do the first calculation which you know is the basic EPS question. And we have to take a look at that part. So let's calculate the basic earnings per share. So what do we have to do to calculate basic earnings per share? Well, the first thing we need to look at the net income. The net income, we're told, is $1 million. Now, what is the income attributable to the common shareholders? Well, it's not a million. You have to take a look at any other types of shares. And in this case, there's preferred shares. They have first right of basically any type of dividends over the common shares. So we have to take into in consideration the preferred shares. So they are 5% cumulative at $2 million. The cumulative is very key because even if we don't declare any types of dividends this year, the fact that it's cumulative we have to consider it. Now, also, pay close attention here. These are not basically convertible. So we only have to take into consideration this once. If it was convertible into preferred shares, we would have to take into consideration this when we do the diluted part. But again, students get a little tricked up by this. They're not convertible. So we only have to take into consideration this one time. So, 5% times 2 million means that there's 100,000 attributable dividends to our preferred shareholders. We have to take that first, got to take that off of there first. So the amount of income available to our common shareholders is 900,000. This is also one of the calculations that students forget to do all the time. They're so focused on the diluted EPS calculations, they miss this one, the easy one. Now here's where the question starts to get really tricky. In the question, it talks about how there was basically a million dollars, 6% bonds, converted into 30,000 common shares on April 30th, 2015. So first off, April 30th, 2015, how many months is that? January, February, March, April. Four twelfths. Very important, that calculation there. We're also told that there's 400,000 issued and outstanding shares at the end of the year. So in doing this calculation, you have to recognize that for the full year, there was 370,000. For a portion of the year, there was 30,000 more. And that's how you get your total of 400,000. But as we know, we have to calculate the weighted average. So when we do this, we have to calculate the number of shares. So 370,000 was outstanding for the entire year. And 30,000 was outstanding for eight months of the year. Remember the first four months, it was a bond. The last eight months, it was common shares. So 30,000 times 8 twelfths means that we have 20,000 
outstanding shares. So that's a total of 390,000. So our number of shares, the weighted average, 390,000. So our basic EPS is $2.31. Now we need to take a look at the diluted part. For the diluted part, what we have to always remember is that when we go through these calculations, 231 has to go lower. If any of the things that we do and look at cause it to go up, it's anti-dilutive. And trust me, there's an anti-dilutive part in here. We do not include it. Now, we've got 6% bonds, 8% bonds, and we have options. How do we determine who goes first? Well, as I talked about in class, options will always be the most dilutive because we don't change anything on the numerator side. Only the denominator, the number of shares, changes. So we always include and do options first. Now options, they kind of baffle me. I actually kind of wonder why students struggle with this topic, but time and time again they do. So please make sure you watch this part of the video several times over and practice this. This is something with a little bit of practice you sh definitely should be able to get 100% on. And that's what my intention is. So let's take a look now at the facts related to our options. We're told that the shares were trading at $29 at the beginning of the year and they were trading at $43 at the end of the year. So what's the average market price of our shares? $29 plus $43 divided by 2 equals $36. So we're going to use the average market price, the beginning year, end of year value of our shares to determine our average market price. Now what does the options say? It says that there's 15,000 options available and they can be purchased at $30. So that means that the company would receive $450,000 if these options were exercised. Now remember, diluted EPS calculations are a what if everything was exercised, everything was converted type of calculation. It doesn't mean that these options were exercised. It doesn't mean that the bonds were converted. But what we're looking at is a what if they were, how would that affect our earnings per share? That's what we want to look at. And one of the most famous investors of all time, probably the most famous, Warren Buffett, always looks at diluted EPS, not basic EPS, when he's evaluating a company. It's the diluted EPS he really wants to know because he believes that's the true measure of the earnings per share. Anyways, let's carry on. How do we do this? This is called the treasury stock method. It's so basically, again, a what if method. If we had $450,000, how many stocks or how many shares could we buy in the open market with that type of money? So $450,000 divided by the average price of 36 tells us that we could buy 12,500 shares. Now, to obtain this $450,000, we had to issue 15,000 shares. So the key thing to understand here, and why this is always the most dilutive, is that we have to recognize that we had 15,000 shares given out. We can buy back 12,500 shares in the market. So we're going to increase our overall number of shares by 2,500. That's why this is dilutive. Now again, this is a tricky question because we're not done just yet. Looking at the question, when were these options issued? Well, it wasn't January 1st and it wasn't previous years. It was September 30th of 2015. Well then how many months is that? Well, do we count September? No, because it's September 30th. So it's October, November, December. We have to now take that 2,500 and times it by 3 twelfths. So the answer is 625. 
So again, this is a tough question. Everything is being thrown at you. Next step, we got to look at the two different types of bonds that are convertible. So for example, there's a 10% bond, but it's not convertible. So we don't actually have to worry about that. Again, that's kind of tricky. It's there, you think you got to do something about it, but it's not convertible. It's only the ones that are convertible we have to look at. So let's just pick one of the bonds. We'll pick the 6% and we'll look at that. So the 6% bond, what are the things that we have to remember with the 6% bond? Well first, it's a million dollars times 6%. But remember, with interest, we're allowed to basically use that as an expense on our tax return. So the pure cost of this has to be taken as an after-tax amount. So 1 million times 6% times 1 minus the tax rate. The tax rate's 20%. We're also told that these bonds were converted April 30th. Well, January, February, March, April, they were outstanding. So we have to calculate this at 4 twelfths of the year. So our effect on income that we would be able to save if they were converted is 16000 Now, of course, we'd have to give shares. So we'd have to convert and look at the conversion factor, and it says that these could be converted into 30,000 shares. So 30,000, again, times the fraction would mean that this would be 10,000. So the shares would be 10,000. So the effect of these, the EPS effect, is 16,000 over 10,000 is $1.60. So what we're seeing here is that that would basically have an EPS effect of $1.60. If you think about our basic EPS of 231, and you think about the little bit of shares we're going to add here from our options, $1.60 is probably also going to be dilutive. So we're probably going to have to include that. But we have to see. We have to do that to our schedule. So we can't know that information just yet. We've got to do a little work still. Now let's take a look at the 8% bonds. The 6% bonds were converted into the 8% bonds. So 1 million times 8% times 1 minus the after-tax rate. And again, what was the fraction of the year that these were outstanding? Well, these were outstanding basically from May 1st, eight months of the year. So eight twelfths, this would be equal to 42,667. Again, let's look at the shares. 20,000 shares times eight twelfths. Notice that we're accounting for the full year, four twelfths, eight twelfths. It does add up, so that basically it does add up to the 12 months. We haven't made any monthly calculations that are errors in, based on the question information. So 20,000 times 8 twelfths equals 10,000. No, equals, sorry, 13,333. Now, this one's interesting. 42,667 divided by 13,333 that one's equal to 320. And as you start to get into this topic a little bit more advanced, and you start to get really comfortable what this topic is doing, you're going to realize that right off the bat, this is anti-dilutive. And when it's anti-dilutive, we don't include it. Now why do I say it's anti-dilutive? Well, when you did your basic EPS calculation, it was 231. This is 320. This 320 would cause that number to go up. But when we look at diluted EPS, we only want the number to go down. Anything that causes the number to go up, we don't include. So, right off the bat, I know this is anti-dilutive. On a test, you show me the questions, you write anti-dilutive here, that's all I need to see. I know you know the logic if you basically put that down. We're not done yet. We still need to do the diluted EPS schedule. So let's do that. So we got to calculate our diluted EPS. So start off with your basic information 
and then put in your shares information. So our basic information was 900,000, 390,000, and our diluted EPS, which is what we're going for, our basic EPS starts at 2.3077. Now, go to four decimals. I always say four decimals. You've seen it in my other videos. You hear me talk about it in class all the time. Always four decimals. Now, what do we do next? This is important. You have a schedule. There's priorities here. You need to choose what is going to be the most dilutive next. Now, we know that options will be 100% dilutive. Add that information in. So that'll be first. And for each time you do this, recalculate. That's very important. You have to recalculate this every single time. So I put that information in. You can now start to see how this is going lower. Next, I'll put in my 6% bonds. I'll put that information in, 16,000, 10,000. Do my totals, 916, 400,000, 625. Again, you can see how this is going lower. Now I'll leave a little bit for you. Put in the 8% information right in here and watch how the number will go up. That's anti-dilutive. That's why we don't do it. Now, I know I don't have to include it because it's actually 320. 320 is higher than 2.28. I know it'll cause it to go up, which is anti-dilutive. But I'll leave that for you. Just if you want, take a look at it. You can also see it in the question, how it caused the number to go up. Therefore, we don't include it. So I hope this video really helps you. And again, let's get some A pluses. Have a good day, everyone.